This is Rovay Park in Ambleside, and this is the path up to the summit of Loughrigg Fell. Actually, it, it just goes to the other end of the park, but it is a start point for one of the best walks in the Ambleside area. A walk that takes us past this sculpture. There's a time capsule underneath that. It then leads us across an old golf course, up a rock scramble or two, and on to the top of one of the region's most celebrated fells. Welcome to Loughrigg. Just why it is held in such high esteem will become apparent as we make our way to the top. From the park, we cross the river by the Grade 2 listed Miller Bridge and turn right. Then it's over the cattle grid and on for a short distance until we get to this left hand turn where the climbing starts in earnest. The gradient's quite severe on this first bit of the climb, but it's not long before the track levels out a bit. Oh, that's the steep bit over. For now, that is. A quarter of a mile later, we reach this gate, and beyond it, a hidden piece of Ambleside's history. Now, believe it or not, we, this part of the walk is what used to be Ambleside Golf Course. It's a nice little nine hole golf course set on the side of, of Loughrigg Fell and actually very popular in the 20s and 30s. It actually went out of use in the 1950s, lack of members. And then evidently it, it was a shilling to play a round of golf here. Actually, the, the shilling fee didn't last very long. By 1906, it was up to one and six. And in the 1950s, it would have cost you three and six. That's a scandalous 17 and a half p in today's money. The house coming up on the right used to be the clubhouse. The first green was in what is now the back garden. This is a remnant of the old golf course. It says, Loughrigg, please keep near wall. And then there's an arrow pointing that way. And there's a very good reason why it's at that position in the wall. Ten yards away is this old gate, which dates from the days of the golf club. It now leads into a private garden, so very much private. But in those days, it led you out onto the first green. So the instructions for walkers who came up through here was keep off our golf course, keep on to the near side of the wall, the path runs up through, please don't affect our game of golf. I don't know about walkers ruining a game of golf. I think they might have needed to be issued with tin helmets for this part of the walk, what with all the golf balls flying around. I don't know about you, but I'm not really into golf. Um, although I've got friends who are and they, they enjoy a game. But I have to say that if I was into golf, then this is the kind of golf course that I'd like to play on. Because the golfers here certainly had a superb view. There's one Phil Pike over yonder. Red screes at the back there. And the ridge up to Fairfield. Low Pike, High Pike, up to Dove Crag. With views like this, I'd have been hard pressed to concentrate on hitting a little white ball around. After the Second World War, membership dwindled and visitor numbers were down. And in 1956, the course closed. And even though I'm not a golfer, I think it's a shame that it's been lost. Beyond this gate we leave the old golf course behind. 
and the views really start to open up. This is actually the old road from Ambleside to Langdale. It goes right over the fell, although unfortunately for us, nowhere near the top. To get to the trig point, we need to cross this stream. And then turn right. Then follow this rough track as it steadily climbs the fell side. The path runs mid picture, but there's a short detour I want to take. The other path is easy to walk and it climbs the fell steadily. This one goes over a craggy outcrop. It's not high, no more than about 10 feet or so, so not particularly difficult. But it is a lot more fun. At the top is a gravel path that wouldn't be able to place in Ambleside Park. It can seem like a bit of an unremitting slog coming up here um, if you're not used to it. In fact, I've just met a couple who had not been before who were hoping that each one of these peaks was actually the top because it was it just seemed to be going on forever. Having said that, the higher up you get, the more the views open up. Um, cracking views over towards Elter Water. You've got the nice line of the, uh, the Fairfield Horseshoe over there. And behind me, of course, Windermere. It's lovely. It's a place to take your time, I always think. Those who have walked with me know I always like to take my time. And with scenery like this to walk through, why would you want to hurry? There's the top, a few people there. Loughrig has many small peaks, each with a view of its own. So once you've touched a trig point, I think it's best to spend some time exploring. A short walk across the fell top brings you this nice view of the Langdales, as well as Elter Water. Loughrig Tarn, always a gem. You can't see Grasmere from the top, but walk down that path to the large cairn and you get a fine view of both lake and village. It's even got daffodils still in bloom at the start of May. And quite fittingly, they overlook Rydal Water and Mr Wordsworth's old house at Rydal Mount. And if we look back the way we've come, there's Windermere, Queen of the Lakes, looking absolutely beautiful in the afternoon sun. Once you get to the top of the fell, it's hard to believe that Loughrig is only 1100 feet high and we're no more than two and a half miles from the busy village of Ambleside. Little wonder then that it's held in such high regard by everybody. <laughs>